Once you own a few drills and some battery chargers, it's a good idea to make a charging station where it all goes together so you don't lose them. But I don't want them on the wall over there. I want them where the action is. So yes, on just about every project I carry out, I'll use a drill or an impact driver or both. And more and more these days, I'm using cordless battery operated tools, the charging of which is now becoming a bit of an issue as I get chargers and batteries from different manufacturers and they're scattered all over the workshop. So time to kill two birds with one stone and sort out my battery charging and my drill storage all together. Now I've decided to go down a slightly different route than most YouTube channels. I'm not interested in putting something on the wall like a museum piece. I need my drills where the action is and the action is here. So I've decided to make a drawer made out of ply to house everything plus my battery charging. So I've just been down to my local DIY shop and I've just bought a sheet of 12 millimeter hardwood ply and I also got them to cut it up for me. At my local shop you get five free cuts when you buy a sheet of ply. So most of the cutting has been done and it's also a lot easier to get in the car that way as well. Now you could use MDF for this sort of project but I'm not a big MDF fan that's why I'm going for ply. You could also use three quarter inch ply but just a word of warning three quarter inch ply when you start joining it together for a drawer like this becomes very heavy very quickly and it's just overkill and it's obviously more expensive so if you want something nice and light that will work and save a little bit of money I would recommend going for 12 mil ply. While I was at the DIY shop I also picked up a pair of these drawer sliders. Now these are 600 mil or two foot long and these are the ones that extend fully. There's three sections and they fully open so the drawer can be fully opened and you can get to even the back of the drawer as well. Now these ones are rated at 100 pounds or 45 kilograms for the pair which I think is plenty for a drawer of this size. So I'm making it about 700 wide that's 28 inches wide by the depth of my workbench which is about 600. I'm going to center it in the middle here so it doesn't conflict with my vise on one side and my router that's hanging under the workbench on the other. So although most of the cutting of the ply has been done I've still got a few more cuts so I think I need to set up my table saw and finish them off. A lot of people have commented on the wobble on my table saw however it's essentially a contractor's saw on a metal stand with wheels so it inevitably has some flex in it. I like it as I can fold it up and put it out the way when I'm not using it. I cut the narrower sections to length with my cordless mitre saw that's never quite been the same since I cut through epoxy resin for a video I did. I really need now to get the blade sharpened. Before I start I know that I'm running low on wood glue so I top up my cheap glue bottle from my big 5 litre tub. I start by fixing the sides and the back of my drawer to its base. After applying glue I use my electric pin nailer just to hold each side temporarily in place before drilling and screwing to give me a permanent fix. Here I'm using my fingers underneath to feel when the two sheets are exactly lined up so I can nail them, making sure I don't actually nail through my fingers. If all the cuts are square and the dimensions are correct on the ply, a box like this naturally pulls itself square when you fix it all together. So that's three quarters of the drawer put together and I must say I do like using 12 mil ply, it is very satisfying. I pinned each section to start with just to hold it in place temporarily but gluing and screwing means that each one of these joints are going to be incredibly strong so it's really going to help anything we put in this drawer in the future. You'll notice it's quite deep, it's about 200 mil or 8 inches, that's because some of my chargers are fairly chunky and they need to sit within this drawer. Also the way I'm going to arrange my drills which you'll see a little bit later means I do need the height as well so that's why it's so deep. I've just got one last section to put on and this is the front piece. 
I've cut it long so it overhangs by about half an inch or 15 mil on either side just to hide the draw runners that you can potentially see on either side here but there's one thing I need to do before I connect this to the drawer you see this is going to be tight up against my workbench and if it is I'm not going to be able to get my fingers over the top of this to pull it open I don't want a knob or a handle on it so what I'm going to do is just cut off a couple of inches here and just sort of scallop it down so in the future I can put my hand in and easily open it and because I'm going to be touching it on the router I'll just do a round over and just sand it down just so it's nice to the touch I don't want anything in the future that can potentially hurt my delicate fingers So that's the basic drawer complete. And some of you would have noticed that the grain on my ply on the bottom of the drawer is actually spanning left to right. And I've done that on purpose. You see the load on my drawer, I want to be transferred left and right to these two sides and then immediately going into the drawer runners. If I did it the other way, potentially go front to back and then they would have to then transfer to left and right as well. And it's just a long winded way of doing it. In reality, a draw of this size probably doesn't make much difference. But did you know that ply has a stronger direction and a weaker direction? Because a lot of people seem to think it's as strong in both directions. And I'll tell you why that is. In every plywood sheet, there'll be an odd number of ply layers. In this one, there's seven, which means the two outside sheets are both going in the same direction. That means there's four in one direction and only three in the other. So the direction with the grain is always stronger. Secondly, those two outside sheets are furthest away from the centre, and the further away from the centre they are, the more effect it has on strength. So you learn something every day. So to also to help strength on this drawer, I've also got a central divider that's going to divide my drills to my chargers, but it's also going to do something else. If I put it in here and then pin the underside into it, it's going to make sure that this doesn't sag and I don't end up with a saggy bottom. I set up a very basic stop block so I can cut a number of 300mm long dividers that will go between my drills all exactly the same length and then decide I'm going to put a round over on the top of each as I've already got the router set up for this. Having a table mounted router makes doing this on small pieces where you're holding the piece rather than the router a lot easier. And having one always fixed into the workbench means I tend to use it more often as it's always set up ready to go. I use the dividers as spacers to position the central divider come strengthener piece and then put a number of screws in it from below.
that's my inserts just about complete, although I've not fixed them in place yet. And you're probably wondering how I plan to store these so they don't fall over and wobble about as the drawer opens and closes. Well, there's different ways of doing it. You could actually just store them standing up if the drawer is deep enough. But they definitely will move about as you open the drawer. And also, as you open the drawer, you really want to grab the drill like this. You want it to be angled down. It's just an easier way of pulling it out. The problem is some of these batteries have got a rounded front. So if you leave the bit on, then they're pretty unstable. They may be, be able to stand up, but definitely as you move the drawer, they're going to fall over. So I've been looking on YouTube for a solution to this, and I've seen pipes cut and metal plating and ply cutouts and all kinds of things. And I've come up with something a little bit simpler, which I call a hole. See, if I drill the right size hole in the bottom of the drawer, not only can I keep the bit on the end of the drill, but it suddenly makes the thing completely stable. And then for this impact driver, I have a slightly smaller hole and suddenly it's not going to fall over. I just love simplicity. I've decided that each drill compartment is going to be exactly 100 millimeters wide. So I make a little jig out of 100 millimeter wide ply with a hole 50 millimeter in from the top and the sides. This means that I can drill holes for each drill in a consistent position in each divider and it also helps me line up the dividers when I'm fixing them. With the drawer complete, I turn to the runners and taking off the drawer section, I clamp and fix them on the sides. These can go anywhere on the sides, top or bottom, as long as both are consistent. Before fixing the drawing position, I cut out a couple of large holes on either side to allow plenty of airflow into the drawer near the chargers, and then make some hangers to support the drawer runners under my bench. Fixing these was the least rewarding part of this project, as under my bench is dirty, dusty and dark as well, so I wasn't overly inclined to film it, and everyone's situation is going to be slightly different. So this is the final product with the drawer set back enough to allow me to still use my clamps along this side of the bench, which is really important to me. So that's just about complete. There it is, everything in its glory. I've got my drills and the impact driver and all the chargers that I own as well. And I've still got a couple of these spaces that I haven't fixed. If I buy some more drills, I can fix these and put the hole in the bottom properly. In the meantime, they're just handy to as dividers to divide up this drawer as well. I've cut out some ventilation holes on either side of the back. So there's plenty of ventilation for the chargers as well. And all the power goes back to a power strip that goes to my NVR switch on my bench. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on the channel and please subscribe. Go and have a look at our Patreon page where there's additional content and additional weekly videos as well. So until next time, I'll see you then.